What is the hardest role in football? You could argue maybe a defensive midfielder, maybe a false nine, or the Manchester City team stylist. I mean, who is dressing these lads? But in my opinion, I think it is the modern fullback. I think the modern fullback has evolved so much, even in the last 10 years. And I think it's got to such a difficult position that I pose the question, are there any really world-class fullbacks anymore? Of course, there are brilliant right-backs and left-backs. You know, obviously, you've got Trent Alexander-Arnold, Reese James when he plays his two games a season. You've got Danny Carvajal, who just won the Euros. Alfonso Davies is still so electric on the left-hand side of Bayern Munich. But I'm just going to compare it to when I grew up, and this isn't nostalgia speaking, but you had Mike Hunt, you had Roberto Carlos, you had Cafu, you had Ashley Cole for Arsenal and Chelsea. You had Sergio Ramos in his early days at Sevilla and Real Madrid. You had Dani Alves at Sevilla and Barcelona. But but nowadays, it seems like when you're comparing that crop of players to the current crop of fullbacks in the world, it's just completely worlds apart. And I think the main point, which I said in the introduction, I think it's harder to be a fullback in the modern game. I think some positions just go across time. I think you look at like a central midfielder. Realistically, in the 90s, a central midfielder's job was to be somewhat box to box, tackle, pass, shoot attack and defend. For the most part, that is very similar to today's game. I think it's become more tactical. I think spatial awareness has become so much more of a thing. But if I'm looking at a Gerrard or a Lampard, they didn't have lesser responsibilities than a Declan Rice or a Jude Bellingham. Most of it was pretty much the same. Whereas with fullbacks, I think the fullback position has changed so, so much. I think more than any position. Because... Back in the day when you were Cafu, when you were Mike on, when you were even Gary Neville behind David Beckham, your job was to defend for the most part, and then when your team was attacking, it was to either overlap or on the odd occasion, it was to underlap. And that was it. There was no going into the midfield. There's no introverted wingbacks becoming another midfielder for like a Man City or an Arsenal. It was to do that job. And that is why people revere these players so much, because... Gary Neville was a great defender because that's what he was asked to do. It's no surprise when you're comparing the assists of the fullbacks, for example, in the Premier League in the 90s and 2000s to nowadays, it's just completely different. I mean, Trent Alexander Arnold has the stats of a right winger. I think naturally, with the skill set of these fullbacks becoming so much more higher, it will take a few years, maybe 10, 15 years in the future, to see that really world class, every single season crop of fullbacks because. You know, we see central midfielders every single year, world-class, world-class, world-class. It's because they are very similar to the centre midfielders of the 2000s. Wingers, for example, world-class because, for the most part, they are similar to the wingers of the 2010s because a Gareth Bale or Cristiano Ronaldo basically played as somewhat as a striker, as does Mo Salah. But other than a few, you can't really compare the modern fullback to a fullback of the 2000s and even some of the 2010s. Danny Alves and Jordi Alba were just ahead of their time because they were playing under Pep Guardiola for the most part. And then obviously Luis Enrique under the Barcelona system. They were just excellent because Barcelona were excellent. Danny Alves could have played right wing in any team, in most teams in Europe. Likewise with Jordi Alba. And they could fit so well into what Liverpool have been doing over the last five or six years. What Man City have been doing over the last five or six years. But I think when we look at... Let's just take him as the case study because he might be the best in the world. Trent Alexander-Arnold. Trent is essentially a right midfielder. Back in the day, he's David Beckham, isn't he? David Beckham had pretty much the same skill set as Trent Alexander-Arnold. But of course, if you put David Beckham in right back, his defensive incapabilities would have been shown more. As Trent does, Trent is expected to attack, attack, be somewhat of a right midfielder, be a right winger. But then his, obviously his defensive abilities when he's playing against an Mbappe, a Vinicius Jr., they get highlighted because he's not a good defender. It's silly to compare him of the Javier Zanetti's of the world because Javier Zanetti was essentially a defensive midfielder, right back, even some of a centre back. So he was so defensive. He was he was elite. He was maybe the best in the world at defending that right back position. But on the flip side, you can't compare him to someone like an Alfonso Davies, like a Trent, because this crossing ability, his attacking ability, was just nowhere near of these lads. And I think the evolution of wingers have pushed on this fullback revolution as well. Because if you think about it, wingers, like I say, are essentially right and left strikers nowadays. You see a weird example of Jared Bowen for West Ham. He's a right winger, as they call him, but in reality, he's a striker for West Ham because he gets in that right side of the box and cuts in quite a lot. Yes, does he float across to the wing occasionally? Of course he does. Of course, Mo Salah will. Of course, Vinicius Jr. I think Vinicius Jr. is probably one of those he could call a winger, but his teammate Rodrigo on the other side, 
I see him much more of a right striker, and therefore there's a lot more space for these wing-backs to go into the positions, which they have to do, because if you're an attacking team, if you are Liverpool and Salah is drifting inside, so Bozlai's drifting inside, Trent has to get up the pitch. And I think the more and more implementation of Gagan pressing nowadays... Every player has to have a role in that press because if they don't, the press is just going to completely break apart and it's not going to work. And therefore, fullbacks have to also press up. It did used to feel back in the day, and I don't always just want to go on the back in the day thing, but it felt like matchups were a lot more one on one based. You know, they would be marketed as Ashley Cole versus Cristiano Ronaldo, the best winger in the world versus the best left back in the world, Mycon versus Gareth Bale. Who did Gareth Bale make his name against? Yes, it was Inter Milan, but everyone goes he played his best game against Mycon. whereas nowadays you tell me in the comments if you can remember any of them when the last time it was a media spectacle that Kylian Mbappe went up against Reese James or someone like that it might be I cannot remember it for the life of me the best defensive right back who is a top right back in the world who Danny Carvajal I don't remember many matchups going Sadio Mane versus Danny Carvajal I just don't think he exists nowadays and of course people will go well that's just the tactical nature of the game it's improved and it's somewhat taken away the individuality of football and that is a fair point I think I think it probably has, and these matchups just aren't as important. I think it's more against the Arsenal defence of Saliba, Gabriel, Ben White, and Zinchenko, instead of back in the day with maybe against Felipe Coutinho versus Pablo Zabaleta when they're both trying to win the league. However, saying all of this, I think it's a very, very new thing that introverted defenders are becoming. The, the craze at the moment, aren't they? I think it was Pep Guardiola against Chelsea last year where he essentially played his defenders as introverted midfielders and he dropped Rodri back into the defence. And what this has done, I think it's put centre-backs into full-back positions. We've seen it so many times where a full-back has gone into a centre-back. Like I said with Sergio Ramos, before he was one of the best centre-backs in the world, he was one of... You know, top 10 right back in the world. Obviously in the 90s, Paolo Mardini played left back and centre back. Gary Neville did a right back and then a centre back job for United. There's so many options but it wasn't really seen until fairly recently where it would go the other way and a centre back would play right back. Jules Kunde, we've seen it at Barcelona. We've seen Ben White at Arsenal. We've seen Gavardio at Manchester City and one of the reasons because of this is centre backs, they're not Robert Hoof anymore are they? Centre backs are essentially midfielders who can defend. They're so good on the ball because at the highest level in the Premier League or La Liga or Serie A, you have to be good on the ball. You have to be quick and athletic because most strikers nowadays are quick and athletic. The big strikers are also quick and athletic. Look at someone like John Duran for Aston Villa. He is a big lad. He's built like the target men of the 2000s, but he can run a lot quicker than a Kevin Davies. And therefore, when you've got this, you can put these players like a Ben White in right back and you don't really feel the change. If anything, it seems like Arsenal played better with him in right back because yes, he overlaps Bakayo Saka a lot, but Ben White played in defence midfielder for Leeds and Brighton, so he can hop into midfield for a bit and then obviously if Saliba or Gabriel goes down, he can hop into defence. And due to this, even though these players are so effective, Gravadio has improved Man City's defence so much and offered a good outlet on that left side. Those kind of star-studded names of the 2000s, it's more of a system player now. And I know I've said wingers are essentially right strikers and left strikers, but I can see the pattern changing again. I feel like Arna Slot for Liverpool, for example, is slowly pushing Salah back out onto that right wing, even though he's played right striker for most of his Liverpool career. And again, it just proves the point that the fullback position is ever evolving. Because if you told a Branislav Ivanovic years ago that he'd be bombing up and down the wing, not occasionally, Every single play of the ball, he'd be up that wing helping Victor Moses or Eden Hazard, whoever it was at that time. Then he would have laughed in your face. But then if you saw Trent Alexander-Arnold, even though everyone who's played FIFA with Trent wants him to go in centre mid, if you told him he'd be playing in centre mid for Liverpool but still in that right back position, he would have laughed in your face. So it's an ever-evolving position and I think it's become somewhat of a system position where... Players are now, they, they do play a role in that position nowadays. But let me know what you think of the modern fullback. Do you think it is a tough position to play? Do you think it is changing? Do you think players have just got worse from the Mycons, the Cafus, the Roberto Carlises of the world? Or do you think it's actually that they've just been asked to do a lot more? Because obviously there are players who just ascend generations. Philip Lam would be perfect for this era. But nowadays it's just so hard to play that position because like I say, it's always changing. But like I say, let me know what you think in the comments section. If you could leave a like of the video, that'd be great. 
And if you subscribe to the channel, that'd be really appreciated. But thanks for watching.